Mikey and Rin stay in. Oh, yeah. Hi, guys. Welcome to Mikey and Rin stay in. I'm Mikey. And I'm Rin. And we are here with a Mikey and Rin stay interviewing. Yes, keep doing episode. it. I'm mm-hmm. still doing it. Mm-hmm. We have our yep. friend Jamie here. Hi, Jamie. Well, hey, guys. How so you happy doing? to be here. Yeah, Um, we just want to point out Jamie's professionalism and beauty, which I don't know if we've, I mean, everyone's beautiful on the show, but Jamie just looks like, and it's like an HGTV special or something up in there. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) right? Does it look like she could host HGTV right now? Yeah. You guys are so nice. Well, I have to point out, I do uh, have a video call every single day out of this office, so this is not my first rodeo, but uh, it's a video call. I'm not on any sort of, this is my first time on a, uh, you know, I'm getting famous now, so I appreciate yes, that. Yes, you are. Welcome. Our millions of viewers <laughs> yes. are going to be swamping. They're going to be, like, the outside of your house is going to be just, like, attacked yes, yeah. by all the fans. Right. I hope you're ready for the paparazzi. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm here. And since I, this is my first time ever and probably the only time i've got my little yes uh irish flush giver i'm gonna <laughs> be good company well not good company because you're not drinking right now right no no okay well, I I'm here for you guys. truth be told um your husband my good friend jamal from growing up we figured out today that we've been friends for 23 years that's adorable <laughs> And um, he was here uh, last night and then just left today. And I did have a glass of wine with him. So, yeah. Good. Good. So, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, my first time fooling around with Jamal was at your parents' house. Oh, <gasps> really? Under their dinner table. What? Oh, I yeah. forgot that. I do remember that now that you say it, but that's awesome. Well, yeah. you're welcome. It was the 4th of July party. And this mm. I didn't even know you were – well, I don't even know if you were into food yet – but before the party had started and everybody had showed up, he served us a nice, the juiciest cherries we ever had. And I was like, this is so upscale. <laughs> and then you got your cherry popped, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Nice. And I can't believe it's only been 23 years because I think, so 2001 is when Jamal and I started dating. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, because we, we met. Married to 18 50. years. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Um, so, Jane, why don't you just start off by telling us who you are? So, whatever that means to you, who are you? Um, well, I am Jamal's wife, um, but uh, I have the mom of three awesome kids. Our two boys just turned six and eight this month, mm-hmm. and uh, Houston and Kingston, and um, our baby girl is two, Lexington. We call her baby, she's baby girl, but she's actually, everybody calls her the CEO of the house. She is the boss. We all abide by her, which is why she is in bed right now, because she'd be at the door bossing me around right now. She is bossy. It's awesome. It's amazing. She is. She gets what she wants. And all the boys, they won't listen to to Jamal or I sometimes, but as soon as she says something, they're running up the stairs to get her pacifier. Whatever she needs, she gets. So it's pretty cute. That's so great. Yeah. I yeah, love that. Me too. A very different world from when I was boy mom for a good four or five years before right. her. So, yeah. Yeah. And were you, did you guys know that you wanted to have three kiddos? Was that something that you guys had talked about before you got married? Well, um, Mikey probably knows this motto. Uh, we call it EWOFJ. Everything works out for Jamal. Um, his, he always <laughs> wanted three kids. He wanted two boys and a girl. That's what he grew up with and that's what he wanted. And I said, whoa, whoa, I grew up with two, we're going to have two. And then I was like, well, everything works up for him. I'm sure we'll have three. Once we had the second one, um, Kingston uh, cried. and cri- The first one we were like, oh, my gosh, parenting is amazing. It's easy. I don't know why everybody complains about this. It's easy. Houston was just easy. He was a gym. We read the books. We did the things. And he did the thing the book said he would do. So it was awesome. trained, sleep trained, you know, by four months. I mean, it was, you know, crazy. And then Kingston came along, and um, and then we were like, nope. And he or Jamal said, nope, we're done, we're done. <laughs> and, and we were done, and we were done um, until surprise, uh, Lexington uh, was here. <laughs> yeah, and was and was Lexi a surprise? Like you guys Lexi weren't. Lexi was a surprise. Both oh, the boys okay. were absolutely planned. Mm. Um, you know, I was I was starting to share with you guys a little bit before. One of the things that I really Obviously, my my pregnancy journey is done. We're absolutely done, and we have made that made sure of that uh, <laughs> for your services. Yeah, um, no longer needed. So, um, 
but we are done. And so, but I still have just been so into your show. Well, first of all, you guys are hilarious and fun. And it's just so juicy to watch just everything. I literally have used a lot of your bindles. So, so nerdy. Awesome. I've yes. used a lot of your cooking stuff. I was thinking about that before I jumped on here. I'm like, literally when you do, oh, you did some, you're like, oh, you just got to sear any sort of, what do you call them? Like pit fruits or um, mm. stone fruit. Yeah. Stone fruit. Stone fruit. I had the word before this, of course. But I, so I was like, I got I've got to grill a fruit and put some honey on it. And I didn't have a stone fruit. I don't know what I grabbed, but I, I grilled something and I put honey on it and I thought I was super fancy that night. <laughs> I've done a lot of the things. <laughs> and, That's the um, theme with you and Mikey and stone fruit. It was cherries like yeah. when we first met. Oh, and now, yes. you know, 20 years later, we're this back is, at stone fruit. I know this is this is part of our journey together. This is our, our friendship journey is stone fruit. Yeah. 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 I like that. Well, and I, I do love food, so um, going to your house anytime is, is a great time. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, where was I? So you were just saying you're Jamal. Oh, and you're I, mama. Right. And so then we, when I went through the journey, of course, then, then episode four and went through the journey of learning about the miscarriage, mm -hmm. obviously devastating for us, but that was my first experience of knowing somebody that had been through that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I had known from reading all of the books and, and just from being pregnant myself and being in hospitals, like it happens so often, but it just was so far off. Um, and, yeah. and, and just, oh, that happens to other people. Kind of like when I was super young and 9-11 happened, I was too young to understand it. It was just like, that was so far off. And now I think about it, I'm like, oh my gosh, because mm -hmm. the world just seems so much closer, right? Yeah, yeah. sure. So, yeah. Um, it really impacted me because I now have really, and then going into the later series where you guys have gone through the journey of, you know, all the emotions of losing someone and, and then seeing people with kids and it really, um, it really changed me and impacted me because I, I realized I, 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 I I'm about 99% sure I've lost a friend over this that has gone through the journey and I know that they've been trying to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not obviously going to say the name, but, um, they, they moved away without even saying goodbye. And it was one of my closest friends and I, and here we were getting pregnant again. Um, and I just, after hearing what you had to say, I'm thinking, you know, I didn't even, I just didn't know that those things would impact because I thought, well, I mean, this is, these are some of my closest friends. They, they still love my kids and they still are happy for me. But you don't think about, you know, it never been, it never happened to me. So I don't yeah. know what that feels like to like, oh, I don't, I don't have that. And to have that feeling. And I, I just thought, wow, you know, when I tell my pregnancy journey, I wasn't, I'm sharing it very honestly with my friends, but mine was very easy. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I just, I, I share that with my friends candidly because I just, I share everything. I kind of overshare, right. I'm very, <laughs> very, uh, inappropriate and, and you'll, you'll, you'll find that out when I tell them what, what we're going to kind of dig into, but, Please. um, the after pregnancy stories, the <laughs> stories of Jamie's vagina. Um, <laughs> it's my favorite kid's book. Sorry, Jamal. He's like, don't be so inappropriate. I mean, what if you're going to run? <laughs> He's like, what if you're going to run for office? I'm like that ship sailed at 2001 when cameras <laughs> came out so we're good oh uh, and i think this is a brilliant promotional video if you are going to run for office right yeah, yes totally. absolutely 51 yeah. percent of the population are women and i think they would yeah. love your candid nature so okay. and i think i think after Donald, I think we're at like, yeah, there is no such oh, thing as inappropriate. Right. I think we can say whatever we want and still get fucking elected. So yeah. yeah, fair enough. But I'm still a lady and I'm not allowed to say as many things as the men yeah. in Donald's world. But yes, that's true. <laughs> you can say uh, all the words you want on this show. It's a safe place. Right. Perfect. Well, and Jane, so, thank you for, for all of that. It's really special to us that, um, yeah, that we have reached you in that way. Cause it, it's, totally. it's been, um, just a, a joy and terrible and awesome and all the things sharing, um, our journey too. And so we really want this show to be about hearing about things that women go through that we don't often talk about. And, um, and I know that you've got, uh, you know, a really particular kind of post-birth story, which mm -hmm. is something, I feel like that postpartum period is something where, you know, we, we like celebrate women when they're pregnant and we want to care for women when they're pregnant. And then mm -hmm. it's like, 
you drop that baby and good luck to you. Have fun. Um, and it's, it's then become so much more about how's your baby, how's the baby doing and so much less about how are you, Mm. um, and how are you recovering? And that's such an important time in a woman's life. Um, so I'd love to just hear a little more about that for you. I mean, you've had now three postpartum experiences, Mm -hmm. um, and were they the same? Were they all different? What was that like for you? So all three pregnancies were, were fairly easy. Obviously, Lexi's was a surprise, so that was emotionally a very different experience until we found out it was a girl and then all was good with the world. Oh, yeah. We're at least getting that extra experience or that different experience. Mm-hmm. Um, the, so the pregnancies were fairly easy. Uh, the, for the both the boys, I mean, I'm going to make some enemies, but I mean, they were three pushes in 10 minutes. Kingston was, I think, only two. I mean, they were very... Bad girl. However, being competitive like that is not good on the healing process. Yeah. So, yes. so my healing was, I mean, literally my pregnancy, I was dancing in the room. I mean, I, I just, I was in really, but I was also, I mean, as you guys know, I'm a post athlete. So is that a word? I don't know. Previous sure. Athlete. Former sure. athlete. I, former. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm going to look really good to my constituents. Um, so words yeah. are important. <laughs> um, but I was, I was in really good words. shape. And so after both the births, you know, yes, all the lady bit areas had like took a long time to heal at six weeks. The doctor's like, okay, tell your husband, you're good to go. I'm like, um, your breaks. Yeah. Cause it was terif- that was terrifying. I felt like I was still broken. And even that was even after both the boys. And so it took a while for me. To, I mean, it, it just, it was a lot of healing and sitting on ice and, you know, but you still had to go back to work and, sure. um, and, uh, you still had to figure out how to pump and nurse and go back and, and, and just a short, I, I don't, I mean, it's a totally different version, but or a little bit different, um, than what I was going to get into. But some of the things that the women have to do when we go back to work, I'm in sales and I'm driving to an appointment, I'm having to pump while I'm driving to my next appointment mm-hmm. and, and then figure out how to freeze it and be prepared and freeze it in my car in an, in 90 degrees. So then in the beginning of the day, I'm having to prepare. I got to make sure I have my ice. I have to make sure I have refills of ice. I have to make sure I have all of my equipment. Otherwise I have to go back to my house. So again, as being a female and a woman in business, that's another thing that it took me the second pregnancy to realize, Oh, you can pump and drive at the same time. Wow. That was a game changer. So little tip on the side, I have a couple other ones that I wish people had told me, which I'll kind of sprinkle in at the end. But, Perfect. um, but anyway, so with Lexi's, she, the boys were seven pounds, two ounces, seven pounds, eight ounces. And then Lexi was a sweet little nine pounds. Ooh, and so all three, I had vaginally. Um, but when I had Lexi, um, everything was going good. It was going good. She was out really quick. And then I got the head out and then I got the shoulder out. And, um, and then, and then the doctor, uh, looked at my dad and the, my dad and my dad and my mom are in the medical industry. So they looked at my dad, my dad looked at her. They both calmly, um, exchanged glasses and okay, I'm what we're going to do. And I was like, I mean, I'm on the epidural. So I was, it was a party in my room for both the boys. I was, <laughs> I, I was not nervous. I knew something was wrong, but I would, you know, what am I going to do? I'm not the doctor. So I'm not one to get worried in emergencies. Mm-hmm. She said, okay, what we're going to do, her shoulder stuck. Everything's fine. She's telling, she's like, I'm going to need you to run and go get the, go get Dr. So-and-so. No, go get her now, now. And so they're running out the door. So now I have the, one of the nurses running out the door to go get an, a second um, doctor. Mm-hmm. And then the, the other nurses is, they're saying, now what we're going to do is we're going to have to pop her shoulder back in. And then we're going to have to pull, and then you're going to have to push again. And we have to get the other shoulder out because mm-hmm. of the way she's situated. I'm like, okay, this doesn't make any sense to me. You got one shoulder out. Why would you need the other one? I don't know. To this day, that doesn't make sense. But then I had the nurse jumping up on top of me. And so now I'm pushing and she's shoving the baby out on top of me. Mm. Well, they're yanking her out. And my dad is a helicopter paramedic. Um, so he's mm. seen everything. He's first on the scene of the worst of the worst. And he said that was the most traumatic thing I've ever seen in my life because they were breaking her neck to get her out. They were, he's like, I'm pretty sure they were sacrificing the baby to save you. And he's like, I don't think, I didn't think she was going to make it. And so basically they were ripping her out of me. And, um, and then they, they carted her off and everything kind of seemed normal. 
they did the whole cleanup and then they still put her on my chest, which was great, but it was only for like a couple of seconds and then they took her, but she was crying. She was good. She was, she was great. Um, and then, so there's a lot more that goes to that. Everything's fine. She's good. But yeah. because of all of that, obviously there's a little bit more healing on <laughs> yeah. the post birth of a nine pound baby that got stuck. Um, and so, so then the healing process goes, the, the actual part of being able to go about my normal day and get better, that kind of seemed the same as the first births, but, um, but with my first two, I was kind of the jerk that after, you know, two or three or four months, I was back in my bikini at the pool looking <laughs> better than yeah. you know, most people that hadn't had kids. And so, um, with this one, I just, it just wasn't happening. And mm. then when I started working out, I started getting really into working out. I was getting back into kind of my weight, the weight size and the, the physical shape and fitting into the same clothes, but I wasn't, I wasn't fitting into my pants and it was really weird. And so anyways, over multiple conversations, I was like, this just doesn't make sense. Like my stomach would not go flat again. And mm. I was like, great. I'm like, this is what you always see. Everybody's like, Oh, you've had three kids. It's fine. And I'm like, no, that's, that's not acceptable. That's not what I'm used to. And I, I'm, it's not what I'm comfortable with. Like I want to be able to fit in my clothes. Right. And, yeah, yeah. and feel comfortable in my own skin. And it wasn't a matter of just like, Oh, it just was comfortability. It was like, Oh my gosh, just bending over. Like it was just, it, I literally looked five months pregnant. Um, when I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so I just happened to have this, some sort of conversation with one of my good friends, Sharon. And she said, and so I was showing it to her. I was like, this is just so weird. I just don't understand why I can't get this down. I worked out and worked out and worked out. And I was pretty fit everywhere else. And she goes, I think you have uh, diastasis recti. And I was like, I was like, what is that? She goes, diastasis recti. And I was, she's like, a lot of people don't know what it is. She goes, it's where you're, so the long part of your abdomen separates. Mm -hmm. Now, so doing more research into this now, obviously I'm diving into it afterwards, but, um, that is, that happens naturally when you're pregnant. So you're, you're going to have it happen because it makes room for the baby, but then you're, then obviously that, that muscle separates to kind of make your belly go out and then it comes back together. Mm. Well, combination of, you know, nine pound babies and three kids and, and, and whatever, and just luck of the draw, a lot of women, still look pregnant after. And so that's, that's typically what women have is the, the diastasis recti or separated abdomen and they have no clue. I've never even heard of it. And I, yeah. my parents are in the medical field and, um, I, I do a lot of reading. It wasn't in any of my pregnancy books and year one, nothing. And just like you're saying, they're not checking up on, on the females and so, or the moms. So I went to two years later, I'm going to my checkup and I thought, you know what, I'm going to just ask her about this because I'd done a lot of research and, and I, I purchased a lot of packages of how to fix it at home because I, even though I got the epidural, I'm way, like I was kind of snotty about um, plastic surgery. <laughs> so like, everybody's like, oh, you have to, all the research was saying like half the research said you have to get a tummy tuck to fix it. It's the only way. Huh. And the other half is, you know, no, there's all these breathing exercises and working out and specific and exercises you cannot do until it's fixed to do. And so I thought, Oh, I'm competitive. I can, I can do this. Right. <laughs> and so I went through and tried to do all of the things to get it. And it did, and it did reduce it. So I'm going to time out on that just so people can kind of know what D diocese recti, the way that you can test it very quick, easy test, yeah. lay on your back and then, um, and then kind of do a crunch and see if you can fit your fingers. If you can fit any amount of fingers or put any pressure in between those two, um, and in between those two ab muscles, the long ab muscles, it goes from your sternum all the way down to your pelvis. Mm. At any point, you've got to do it all the way down. Um, and some people just have like maybe they can barely get a fingertip in. It can go all the way up to four fingers wide that you can fit wow. all the way in between your abdomen. That's how far split it is. What was yours? Mine was three and a half. Wow. Yeah, three and a half. And which, so I was almost the worst. So that was like, Oh my gosh, you know, yeah. and what had happened is I had started working out and I didn't know I had it and I was really getting after it. I was doing the medicine ball. I was doing all these, do, 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 all these things that all the things that once I learned about it, they said, do not do. <laughs> and, um, of course. You know, told me. So I did all the things to make it worse. Um, I started getting really fit and my stomach was starting to go down. And then all of a sudden I remember it all of a sudden coning out and I'm like, what is this? Because the abs were like tightening around and then your stomach was kind of coming out. 
And then, yeah, and then all of a sudden, so now what that is when you have it separated, well, so then we're, so then I'm like, all right, let me just ask my doctor about it. She's like, well, let me refer you to a specialist. So I referred me to a specialist and the specialist, um, she was referring me to a specialist for other items that also was due to Lexi's pregnancy. Um, This is section B of Lexi's pregnancy, which is now I'm very active boy mom and I have the baby girl. And we have a trampoline, so jumping on the trampoline. That was a new thing after healing, right? Yeah. Um, now I'm I'm one of those ladies that make that I'm watching on I'm making fun of on these commercials. Like they're like you sneeze and you're terrified to sneeze in public or at a work of it. <laughs> and um, and I never did the full on like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna pee my pants, right? But <laughs> it, it's it's enough to where I'm like, I have I have I'm not gonna say things that Jamal will be embarrassed of, but Candy liners were important at a certain sure, time. Yeah. I couldn't go jump on a trampoline without, you know, I jump on the trampoline. I'm like, okay, hold on. I got to go pee first. So then I go pee and then I could come out and probably be fine. Mm. Probably. Right. Be a little so, but sneezing and coughing, it, that's, you know, it, it was like I was in Vegas. It's just a gamble. You don't know. <laughs> so, so that was other reasons. I was, I was like, I need to talk to somebody about this. There's gotta be, I mean, this, there's gotta be something I can do. Yeah. So I talked to her. I went there originally to talk to her, the specialist about that. So and who then was the specialist, did they refer you to like a physical therapist? Who was, who was that person? Um, uh, uh, I might have her card right here. Um, it's, she's like a pelvic specialist. Mm, pelvic okay. Health, yep. pelvic okay. health. I am not a doctor. Um, <laughs> But basically, she's like one of the best top specialists in Houston that she does everything. She can she can make your lady butts look 20 years old again. She can <laughs> rearrange stuff. She can tuck and nip and fix and do and all that. Okay. And she's a surgeon. surgeon as she's well. a surgeon. She's, yeah. a pla- she's a plastic surgeon, but only for pelvic health. Got okay. It. And so I'm going to talk to her about that. And I said, hey, by the way, I don't know if you're the person I would talk to about this, but I think I have DRA. Not a doctor, but um, I'm very, I, I want to know all my options. I've tried to do the exercises, blah, 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 fast forward. So I lift it up and she starts, now this doctor, very good, but not the best bedside manner. She was, she was just like, that is not DRA. You have a hernia. And I'm like, oh, wait, what? She's like, girl, look at it. You have a hernia. And she was, I'm saying it nicer than she said it. She said it like I was an idiot. And how do I not? know that that's a hernia i'm like just because i'm not a doctor right, right, sure. right. What I pay nor you. have i ever had a hernia um plus i heard hernias hurt really bad mm-hmm. um and i didn't have an audi like i mean i guess my belly was belly button wasn't super cute little any belly button like it was but it wasn't mm-hmm. like when it was pregnant right right so clearly i had a, a hernia per this doctor and so i thought okay well, well what i do she's like well we have a general surgeon that can fix that when i fix the other issues so so she went through so let me skip to the so I told her about the issues. And so then they're like, all right, well, we have to do testing for this. The testing for this is the second to worst part. Obviously the worst part is the healing after, but of the surgeries, but the testing was horrible. You go in, think you're going to go on your lunch break. You have to take half of a day off work. If not longer, it's four. the whole test is four hours long. Wow. They, pump you through, uh, they pump you full of liquid, make you chug like half a gallon or some crazy amount of liquid. Can't remember. You drink, you drink all of this liquid, and then they they stick a catheter in. Okay, normal stuff. They also stick a catheter in your booty. That's fun. Oh, That's double nice. catheter? Double right. penetration? Double. Oh, right. First time. Thank <laughs> you, Dr. Dr. Love. Uh, <laughs> thank you for – dear penthouse forum. Yes. 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 I had a wild time at the doctor's yes. office. So they're now, so then they're like so they're filling you up and now they're like all right now pee it all out I'm like does it happen that quick I don't know again not a doctor so I so I do as I'm told they're just trying to see can you empty your bladder fully mm. okay. then they fill you back up again you chug 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 super uncomfortable mm. and then they make you do all sorts of fun stuff like sneeze and cough and trampoline you just, oh what and trampoline yes and trampoline yeah. here but all the while. <laughs> You're sitting in a normal room that just happens to have stirrups, but it's not like it's just a little bit different. They have a couch in there. It's just a really weird combo, but yet you have a bucket to catch your fluids that's yeah. also weird. weighing the fluids that are coming out. It's it's wow. very glamorous. God, this is someone's fetish so hard. No doubt. Oh my <laughs> god. No doubt. Yeah, the, oh you know the bucket double tube. <laughs> 
butt butt bladder <laughs> test. Love that one. <laughs> wonka, wonka. <laughs> oh, nice. I've never nice. heard about this. I have not either. Can yeah. I ask you um, a Please. question about quantity? So, yes. what quantity of liquid was coming out of the uh, vagina tube, and what Ooh. quantity was coming out of the butt tube? I don't know that answer, but I do okay. know the results of all the other tests, which will give us some information. Okay, yeah. I think if I had to give a like a you're gonna live and die if I'm right, I think yeah. my booty was good. I think I was good on that. Okay, all right. As far as liquid coming out. Right. Um it seemed like maybe there was a like the liquid wasn't going to the right place if it's coming out of your butt. Right, right. 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 <laughs> that's that's a, a different issue, I think, right? Yeah. Uh <laughs> But so I, I do all of the things, then they take all of the things out and then they're going to wand you with a, um, what's the ultrasound. Yeah. They're going to do a wand ultrasound. Now they're doing a wand ultrasound. Then they're doing the feeling and touching. And I'm like, couldn't that have been first? Or I don't really know which order I prefer it in. I don't really know. <laughs> but you're, you're doing the wanding and all this stuff. And then they do, then, then they do the regular ultrasounds. So they have all these pictures and all the information. Okay, great. So then they come back and tell me, all right, we have all the information. So then I'm waiting, um, another four weeks, six weeks or whatever it was of still not being able to go to the trampoline with my kids and all of this stuff. And then they give me the results and she has these pictures that um, it's funny because it's like the, the print of the picture looks like from when we grew up and went to school and they made the same copy 9,000 times. And it's like, <laughs> blurry. So, and she's drawing and she's like, okay, so here's the, what we've got going on. So I had a whole thing, a lot of, I'm glad I brought some of those things up because I had a whole lot going on. So I really, the, my whole goal was, I didn't really care about the peeing thing. I'm like, ah, penny liner, I can figure it out. Or I can go pee before the trampoline. I really <laughs> want to fit in my pants again without having to unbuckle it when I go to drive a long, you know, hour trip, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, just fix my, my belly poking out. But I'm glad I did because, um, so they found, not only did I have a really bad hernia in my belly, of course oh. I had diastasis recti, so we were all right on that. But what had happened is it split open and then I got the hernia. And to the point where my insides were coming out, like you can, I mean, that's what a hernia is. Your, yeah, sure. your guts and stuff can come out. That's cool. Um, <laughs> super glam. Sorry, <laughs> um, like he's in the camera. He's, he's in <laughs> right, the air. Yeah. We're actually all safe right now. He's flying yeah. back right now. Yeah, he's, um, he's listening from mm, space. Yeah. Then I found out I had two additional hernias I didn't even know you could get. So I had a hernia in, um, in between... So imagine your 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 booty shaft tube, and you, those are not clinical terms. Booty <laughs> shaft tube. Booty shaft tube. <laughs> and your vagina tube. Yeah, I had a hernia in between two of those two, and then I had a hernia in between my vagina and above it. So somewhere else. So I had two hernias, basically moving things all over. Wow. And then on top of that, my urethra was sad. Instead of it being, you know, straight and taut where it's supposed to be, it was like, mm. <laughs> and then she's like, and then your bladder is not in the right place. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? She's like, well, your bladder. And she drew this, you know how a comment sign looks like? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's what your bladder is supposed to look like. This is what yours looks like. Mm. <laughs> so mine was like a sad upside down C. So the fact mm -hmm. that I was able to like go to the bathroom all like normally and, and, you know, function normally was pretty amazing to her. Um, those were all the things that had happened from that one birth. Yeah. And And because you had this extra situation where someone was literally pushing on your organs right. <laughs> and the baby. Mm -hmm. And then you're also pushing. So was that, was it like the confluence of all of those factors? Plus, I mean, she was a big baby too. But right. I think, I think so. it was just a confluence oh, of all that. Like a great way to... Well, that is what I asked her. But I remember she is kind of the a. I hate saying this, but she 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 came around. She's actually really really cool. But she was very like she. I was really nervous. I'm like I only the only other person I'd seen that other than my husband was the doctor that referred me. I, you're a new person. I don't want you to know all of the stuff, right? Right. So I need <laughs> to have a little bit of warmness about it, like. Like, idiot, that's a hernia, you know? Right. So, yeah, she's like, I was like, so what caused this? Was it maybe because she got stuck? Because she wasn't the one that delivered the baby. So I mm. said, was was it because she got stuck? Was it because she, the person jumped on top of me? Like, how does this happen to people? And she goes, 
Well, the, the three biggest causes are uh, if you have a baby over eight pounds, I'm like, check. If you have a, um, if you're over 35, I'm like, check. She goes, and if you're Caucasian. And I'm like, the what? And I still to this day don't know if she was joking or being a jerk, but, or she was just, you know, like, really, there's, it's a crapshoot. If that She's was kind like, of her way yeah. of saying it's a crapshoot. If you're Caucasian and you have a black husband, yes. You know, <laughs> God hates interracial marriage, so this is your curse. Well, I mean, I just like, yeah, it just feels like someone getting on top of you and ramming the baby out with their hands doesn't feel like it wouldn't cause a hernia. Right. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Caucasian part makes sense, too. Yeah. yeah. Sure does. Right. You're white and weak. Right. Because you new know, other ethnicities get hernias. Right. No. Right, right, right. <laughs> wow. So, oh. so, yeah. So. And so you, because you also mentioned when you reached out to us that your your insurance covered these, like, the procedures and the, the. so, first of all, I want to know what the fix was. Mm -hmm. And then I also want to know, was that, like, did your insurance cover this stuff? Is it kind of a commonplace thing? Do you know? Yeah, so the coolest thing, and the reason why I wanted to bring it up is, this problem, diastasis recti, and the hernias inside and the and the bladder leakage, yeah, um, is super common, super mm -hmm. common, but it's yeah. not normal. Meaning, it should be fixed, and it can right. be fixed. And like literally, everybody I've, like, because I'm very, you know, I'm very open about it because I want people to know about it. Kind of like with your, you guys have done with your show, because there are so many women that don't know that it's normal, and um, even people in my family I've shared this with, and they're like, wait. I can get this fixed. I'm like, it's covered by insurance. So that's what the doctor told me as wow. I said, so what's covered, what's not. Mm -hmm. The hernia was covered. Here's what's very old white men making um, laws. <laughs> the hernia is covered because a lot of men get covered, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. uh, or get hernias, right? Um, and the bladder leakage and the hernias and the urethra. So to fix it, you had to get a basically a hammock on my urethra. So you cool. get a little hammock. They make a little mesh, right? And then they cut two holes. I'm not going to show you down here. They cut two <laughs> holes, like, basically just above your 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 lady bits. Yeah. Um. So in where your hair would be. So you're not even going to see the little scars. And they literally pull the, like, met the hammock through. Wow. Cut the hammock and sew it into your skin. And then wow. it kind of seals into there. So it basically is a perma hammock. Yeah. So Fun. Now your urethra is nice and straight. And so yeah, it sounds like a sweet, all-inclusive thing. Yes. The bladder, I don't know how she fixes that. She, she puts stitches, you know, to, to put it back in place and then stitches it, right? Mm. And then the hernias are just stitch repair. Um, and then I'm not allowed to cough or sneeze for six weeks while I'm healing. Really? Um, how there's a whole lot more I'm not allowed to do, which I'll jump into. But um, So all of that is covered, um, which... I joked about it because I made the joke of like, oh, can you put the husband stitch in? She's like, girl, the hernia is the husband stitch. And yes, that's covered by insurance. I'm like, of course <laughs> it is. You know what's not? Diastasis recti. Mm. So, wow. wait, we have, so my back is in pain because it, you're, if your ab muscles are super weak, you're overcompensating with everything else. So I was picking up a nine pound baby who's now a 35, probably 40 pound baby now. It's, it's really hard on me because I'm using all these muscles I don't have. Mm. Um, everything's just getting weaker and beat up. And so that was really annoying. But I was lucky that, and I, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, and I don't know if it was supposed to happen, but the doctor, the general surgeon that did my, because you remember that, the jerk doctor who's sarcastic <laughs> only does pelvic health. Mm. So she had right. a general surgeon fix my hernia. And so when I went in to talk to him, now I'm now on a third surgeon who he was amazing. Mm. Just, just the nicest human you could ever meet. Um, he showed me how he's going to do it. And there's lots of different ways to fix hernias. Please, please do your research because I've yeah. had friends do hernias and they literally have six scars on their belly, like on the outsides where they're scoping it. So now they have scars all over their stomach and inside their belly button where they, cause it's a belly button or a, a umbilical hernia is a belly button. Mine, there's no scar. He went in through my belly button and he said, well, while I'm in there, I can throw some stitches into your abs. I'm like, I don't have to get a tummy tuck. And he's like, well, you have to get a tummy tuck if it's from sternum to pelvis. because There's no way I'm going to, and you know, remember, I'm only going to be able to reach as far as my, you know, you're, you're going to have a little opening. I can stretch it. But I'm only going to be able to reach as much as I can maneuver the skin. Right. So basically yeah. two inches up, two inches down. 
Whereas most women, I just lucked out, but mine was really, it was really wide, but it was only two inches up and two inches down. Wow, okay. I literally went in while he, I was like, so how much is that going to cost? Because I know it's not covered by insurance. He's like, I'm not charging you for stitches. I'm like, Whoa. what? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's not so I didn't want, I didn't want, I also didn't want to do the tummy tuck because you have to have literally a scar from, mm. from hip to hip, kind of like a C-section, which is fine, but, and I would have done it, but I was like, there's got to be another way. And so yeah. I was lucky, not, not everybody is, that's going to be a solution for, right. but he went in and did it and, um, not a scar on my, on my stomach. And, um, but yeah, so that wouldn't have been covered. Had I had to get it through a tummy tuck, you'd pay the 10 grand for the tummy tuck Ooh. and be out even longer mm -hmm. and I just I coordinated the other thing I did is I just had to plan I mean because we don't you know you don't get a lot of time off or whatnot so I just planned it around the holidays and so I mm -hmm. knew about this back in June and I planned it for December so I could heal during the holidays okay um, and I took the full uh so six weeks before you can pick up over 10 pounds so for six oh, weeks wow. I could not pick up my daughter wow. you can't pick up anything over a um basically a milk jug Okay. And wait, really? Jake, this happened just this December? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, my God. I didn't realize that. Yeah, oh, yeah so, so I'm was... watching all your videos, and I'm like, yeah. hey, you know what might be fun to talk about? <laughs> yeah, wow. I, I didn't realize that it would, that this was now. Oh, wow. my gosh. Okay. Well, yeah, so I just back... got released three weeks ago from, like, now I can do all the things. And, yeah, you and do want to sneeze my... and cough <laughs> with us? <laughs> I have sneezed. I have coughed. I got food poisoning four weeks into my healing and I oh. was terrified. Well, it was a one day thing. I literally was going to, I knew I was going to throw up, but I literally, you have a healing wrap you can put on. Mm. I have it on. I held my puke in. I wrapped myself up and I threw up on thing. Oh, and that's... I like, oh my God, I hope I did not pop all my stitches. Cause that's yeah. they're like, not like yeah. a straight jacket for your tum tum. I did. I did. I straight jacket myself. And uh, wow. Wow. Yeah. But that's so, so intense. It's a scary surgery. I mean, it's a scary healing because you're just like, you can't laugh. You can't do anything. I mean, it's, it's pretty intense. But wow. How are you feeling now? I feel amazing. So I got, I was released to do all the things. Um, I didn't pick up my daughter the first week because I still was super nervous, but I started going to the gym and doing leg workouts for the first week, leg and maybe a little bit of back, but nothing. So now I'm three weeks in and I, I feel so much stronger. I mean, things I couldn't do three weeks ago, um, I'm, I'm doing no problem at all. So I feel like awesome. so much better. It's okay. already like half the size it was. I mean, I still have swelling from the surgery, so it hasn't completely gotten down because it's, it's still a lot of healing. I mean, I'm still, you know, bruised in places, mm. not as much, but I mean, it's crazy. You look like you were beat up. I mean, yeah. black and blue, but. Mm. Wow. Well, you, you might not know the answer to this, but is there, um, like, besides the risk factors, right, having a big baby and being over 35, is there stuff that <clears throat> women white. can do, and being white, is there stuff that women can do to prevent the ab separation, like, either before they're pregnant or while they're pregnant? I think, um... I mean, I think the best part is obviously taking care of yourself and making sure you're fit and in shape. I was definitely, you know, I was a track athlete and then I had, you know, it was very, a lot of years after that I had Houston, but I still was, I had very, very tight, flat abs. Yeah. Because I worked, I mean, I had 300 sit-ups a day or whatever I would do. I mean, that was no problem. So I was, so I would say yes, making sure that your ab health and your, your, your tight. Mm -hmm. You're, yeah. you're working out. I mean, everything's easier. I think I really think that my first two birds, why they were so fast, is because I I was very in tune with my body. I knew how to use my muscles and just push. Right. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I mean, you're saying just do crunchies through the entire pregnancy? <laughs> no, before <laughs> before you're going to have it. But I mean, if 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 that's not if you're not in that shape and you're ready to have a baby, then you just you just do it. Mm, yeah. um, because I think you know, obviously, eventually, if you have the third one, <laughs> you know, right. it could happen and. And then at the end of the day, I mean, you can, you can do all the workouts and see if that helps a lot of stuff online. And that doctor that is very convinced that she knows the answer. She's, I asked her, I was like, well, I've been looking at all these things online that say I can fix it with, she's like, there's no way to fix it. There's no way to fix it. But I will say when I did start doing the workouts, I, it did shrink it down to like two inch, two fingers. Oh, okay. You know, I just couldn't get it any lower, but I wasn't. I honestly wasn't doing them hundred percent. And at this point when I was having to do all the other surgeries, I was like, well, throw it in. If it's free, let's do that too. Totally. You know? Yeah. So. yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Common but not normal. Um, do you have any other? Because you've been, you're a mama to three kids. You've been through three pregnancies. You're like. I don't know, kind of the pregnancy guru. Um, <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people that listen to our show are women that are trying to get pregnant yeah. or and or moms. Um, and so do you have any nuggets of wisdom? About getting them? pregnant? Anything. Yeah, getting oh. pregnant, momming, um, postpartum. I think my journey was very different. That I, I kind of, in the same length that how we didn't get pregnant. I mean, we've been together since 2001. So for 10 years, we were doing the pull out and pray. Yeah. yeah, pregnant. Totally. So when it was like, oh, we're gonna do it now, like, like that's just a switch. I heard you say that. And I was like, that's literally what we thought. <laughs> um, but we were fortunate that it just it did. I, I don't yeah. know how you know. And I, again, now watching your show, like I feel very guilty saying it that way. And again, I thank you for your show because it's it's really cautioned me to ask, even ask people, you know, what is your when are you gonna have kids? Because I used to. I used to be that person and it's super embarrassing now that I watch your show. I've learned a lot and I'm like, wow, that's really insensitive because not everybody is going to have kids and not everybody wants kids and not, and somebody could, somebody could be going through that journey. You don't even know they've been trying for three years and you just ask, yeah. well, when are you going to have kids? I mean, that is right. horrible <laughs> Thank you for that. But to go back that to, works. so a couple of random tips that I wish I had known. Yes. Um, the nursing pain, your friend that did the nursing, I was so happy that you had someone early mm -hmm. on do the nursing, like, and truly explain that because I thought the pregnancy was easy. The birth was easy. Oh, I'm good. And I research, I didn't have little brothers or siblings growing up. So I, I was a book reader and a researcher because I didn't know, have, I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. So I want to be prepared. So I was like, I researched and researched and researched. I'm like, I've got this nursing thing down. I'm going to be able to do it. And with Houston, my first one, it was horrible horrible like we he latched on right away it was great but I just wasn't eventually it came fast forward just, I wasn't producing enough to keep up mm. with him and it got to the point where and I think the way he drank now that I've had three I will say they all do nurse differently I think it's just the mom and I don't think it's just the baby I think it's yeah. the combo right mm. I probably didn't know what it was supposed to do he didn't know what he was doing and he was hungry um and I couldn't keep up. And so it got to the point where and my body had never been through it. So it was the most amount of pain I'd ever, it was worse than the pregnancy. It was worse than the birth nursing. Wow. I was, I was, I was holding him and feeling this like beautiful bond happen. And I'm like tears streaming down and people are having to come over and wipe them. And it was like, I couldn't stop them. I mean, I was in so much pain. Yeah. Wow. It was terrible. Second one, easiest okay. thing. I mean, he took to it. So now I wish I had known on my but you're exhausted right like that's the most exhausted you've ever been in your life so I wish somebody had told me about side nursing like where you're laying on your bed and you just literally lay them next to you you're basically napping with your baby yeah and I didn't know about that or maybe I had known about that but I had read so many things like oh my gosh you could roll on your baby and I was so scared mm. but by the second one I knew my body and I think now knowing what I know I would suggest try that but have your husband or partner or somebody sit next to you while you're doing that because you are going to fall asleep and if you don't know how hard of a sleeper you are obviously you don't want to have a bad end result but once you get to know your body oh my gosh nursing with Lexi was so much easier because I knew about slide side sleeping yeah the last yes. month of nursing with Lexi by my third child is when I found out that people could walk around and target and I I'm not I'm all about breastfeeding and everything, but I'm super shy. Like I've never popped my nipple out in front of anybody. Like, <laughs> and my mom, and I'm even nervous, like, mom, hold on, let me do this. And then, you know, um, so I'm not that person. I love it when people do it. Cause I'm like, I wish I could do that, but I'm just not that brave, but I didn't know you could have a baby in a freaking carrier. Right. And walk around in target and you have the little thing over them or don't, you don't even have to have the thing over it. But I did. Right. I'm like, I don't even want to see in my boobs. <laughs> I'm just a little nervous. Um, they don't know. Nobody knows you're nursing while they're just chilling. Right. They're literally right. eating. I'm like, yeah. I would have yeah, shopped Andrew. so much more and got so much more <laughs> done. I never used that. I didn't understand why moms use the carrier so much. I'm like, why do you have the carrier? If the baby's asleep, like I'm putting that thing down so I can clean and cook and 
go shopping and do whatever. Mm -hmm. So I wish I had known you could nurse in public with the baby in your carrier. Really? Um, That's a good well, one. And wouldn't it be incredible if that was just a, a standard part of prenatal care, right? Here's the different ways to nurse. Here's the different positions. It might not be great for you to cradle your baby and nurse like that. Right. Um, so, yes, I think or that's really a, brilliant. Yeah. They did. I did do a lot of the, obviously, utilized a lot of the um, lactation consultants, different yep. ones. I went to the classes. Most hospitals, that's the other tip. Most hospitals do give free, um, don't pay for the lactation consultants. They give a free, there's free classes you can go to every single week, whichever hospital you go to. Cool. And if there isn't, then there's, you got to Google it or find out. There's there's free, free locations you can go to and groups. Mm. And they all work on it together and it's so comfortable, even though I was like nervous in that group. I wasn't because everybody's boobs are out. You know, there's a lot of things going on. Sure. The other thing I wish I, it took me until, I mean, when Houston just was, wasn't eating, wasn't eating, wasn't eating. And of course I had been, I'm going to nurse. He is not going to touch this poison mm. formula, right? Mm. I, I was devastated. And then of course it's the cycle of like, you can't make, because you're so nervous. And I wish I had known, you know, so I, I had a good doctor that said, you, you understand that formula isn't poison, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, and I literally was like, no, it is. Like I, when she had said that, I thought, oh my God. And she said, then she said, um, starving is worse. And I, yes. and it, I, it took her saying something so silly as that for me to realize like, wow, I am really beating myself up over, let's get him fed. Yes. And yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. But like, why would I starve him? Because he can only have my gold, right? Mm. Um, and so I was able to go, you know, four or six weeks with him and a lot longer with the other two, but it was the hardest six weeks. So I wish someone had just, people would give you more grace as you guys have talked about with, yeah. because it is, it's, it's, some of it just doesn't work and for one person and, and then it works for the next baby. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so huge. I know it's to give people just a little bit of like space around their journey being different and yeah. everybody's bodies being different. And, you know, I think that's just such a key part in, I don't know, life in general, but also especially around parenthood because there's so much judgment that can happen, mm. you know, and it's like, is it really worth it in the end? Yeah. 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 And there is a bit of a, you know, I think in a lot of women's minds, a sort of like gold standard of right, the way of course, that you're yeah. going to be pregnant, birth nurse and raise your your child yeah um <laughs> I felt like and, that. yeah um that and then also to know that that kids are really resilient right and mm -hmm. that they're gonna like find their way to to thrive a lot of the time yeah um Jamie, you are like a wealth of fun, knowledge, incredible stories. Yeah, beauty and fashion beauty and style. Beauty and fashion and style. I feel <laughs> like I'm a homeless person dressed right now. <laughs> I know. I'm like, oh, what am I, I doing? I keep looking with this in the little the little Skype box. And no and like, oh, eye makeup gosh, on. Come on. Get it together. So All right, do you are you ready to eye makeup on, Mikey? What's that? The next time you gotta get your eye makeup on. I know oh, I should. I do need seriously. to. We've been we literally only watch RuPaul's Drag Race right now, and oh. I'm so jealous of their eye makeup. It's I need to get on it. Yeah, it's amazing. I love how you just did that. Oh yeah. Are you um Are you ready for the final five questions? Oh, I well I will be. There yes. we go. Perfect. I knew you. Were, I was like, well, maybe we'll run out of time, and then they won't ask me, and I won't have to. I should have prepared. Okay. Let's no, go. we're doing it. No rapid fire. First thing that comes to your mind. I'm going with you. Your first question. Um, your favorite swear word. Well, according to Lexi, it's oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was her, and, and that was her first first swear word, and and um, so apparently that's a very common one. <laughs> what order? What order was it in of words? Like it was her first swear word, but what was her like? How many words in was it? Oh, I don't. I mean, now she's got oh shit and oh fuck down. Yes, she's okay. had. Uh, I mean, no. She. I mean, she says full sentences now. She's. Oh yeah. She's, but she's, I was wondering if it was like she no. said like mama apple and then oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, most kids start with data, and all my kids it was data. He was. Oh, the okay. Last, <laughs> was the last always works out for Jamal. Shit. Yes. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> okay, um, favorite 90s re makeout song? Mm. Well, I'm not a music connoisseur. Oh, I need to Or something. Well, the song that, that he's going to kill me, but the song that he always serenades me to is yes. the, um, what is, is it Lenny? No, what's that guy's name? That's, you girl, you know, I, 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 I love you. I'm totally. Yeah. <laughs> you know that song? 
No, but I want to know that yeah. song. It, it, you know the song? I'm just so tone deaf that you don't know the song. When I it. <laughs> no matter what you do. You don't know that song? You can you send it to me after, yes. the, after this. Okay. Put it in the notes. I'll send you a video of Jamal singing it. Fuck yeah, you will. Yes, you will. Yeah, perfect. Yes, you will. Um, well, since you are in Texas, um, and, you know, it's kind of, it could be a great state to turn this election season. Who is the 2020 candidate? Mm, this is the one that I kind of prepared for because I was like, oh, they're going to ask me and I'm so unprepared. And the only reason being, I, 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 am, I got really into politics when Bush was going the second time. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. When Clinton, after Clinton, when Bush was going to try to win. Yeah. Did, of course. Um, and then since then, I've gotten further and further into it, especially now being, I mean, just with my journey in life, it's, I've learned a lot more, obviously, that impacts me with having mixed kids and um, just mm. a lot of different issues that I don't think would have been, I wouldn't yeah. have known about, right? Mm. So I'm not answering your rapid fire, very rapid fire, sorry. But <laughs> uh, from what I know, I, I, I want to dig, it's got, it's been so dramatic in such a dramatic year that I watched very intently the first couple Um debates but it was so much like people i loved like i liked a couple people and then they were going at each other and i was like okay i got a timeout yeah, yeah. i would say if i had to, if i had to pick right now it would be maybe either yang gang or buddha judge wow yeah, yeah i like it i like yang gang because he's he's very refreshing mm -hmm. and he yeah. has new ideas and it's very outside the box now and so far he's been very appropriate i am very fearful because he's not a politician but i also like that about him mm -hmm. we also yeah. But other people really like that about our current president, so right. that's a little scary. But I just don't feel like he has, he just doesn't seem like, we already knew the other person was a horrible human being before yeah. he was elected. Right. So yeah, right. we don't know that about the Yang gang yet. Yeah. Um, and Buttigieg, I really would just say, like, I haven't really seen anything I dislike about him. Yeah. And I guess I just feel a little bit closer to him because uh, Jamal got to meet him recently because he was oh, at nice. his breakfast oh, with him. Nice. So he's like, yeah, he has really great ideas. He's a great guy. And so I'm just like, okay, well, maybe I can... I'll add him to my little short list. Yeah, I like but it. it could completely change. I'll I'll do a lot more digging and a lot more research. Of course. Closer. Yeah. Um, okay. La uh, the the last time you had a really great experience with a doctor or with a healthcare professional. Mm. Mm -hmm. That would be um, the doctor that hooked up my abs. The ab yeah, whisperer. I know. <laughs> yeah, and, and he, just, just such a good ham, just such a good human. Well, that, and I will, I will also say, Doctor Farrier is our our kids, our kids doctor, and he does exactly what you were talking about. Every time I would bring the babies in for their checkups, every time he's looking at me too, and he even makes comments like, "Wow." Like, especially if it's like the first couple of weeks of checkups, that's where you're looking for mm. postpartum in the first couple of months. Every time I come in and he'll compliment and not in a creepy way. He's just like, you look really good. You've got yourself put together. You put your makeup and hair. That makes me feel really good. How are you feeling? <laughs> He's very much yes. asking about me mm. um, totally. to make sure that, you know, I'm not going through that. And I think that that, I think that that's so smart. Why wouldn't we have all of the kids doctors do that? Cause you have to take the kids in sure. so they could be the first yeah. eyes. Because we're not going to know. Right. We don't know. We've never been through it. So. Right. Nice work, Dr. Farrier. Huh? Do we yeah. Have oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. My favorite question. How can I forget? How about your favorite eat your feeling snack? What's your go-to when you're feeling low? The uh, answer can be, it can be gin, too, if you need. <laughs> yes. well, you literally stole my thunder. I was going to say Captain and Coke. <laughs> <laughs> A Captain and Coke or a glass of wine. I mean, it could be any of the any of those good Irish tricks and Irish yeah. coffee. I mean, yes. yeah. I think my I'm gonna drink my feelings. That's such a good Irish answer. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Jamie. Thanks. You are a beautiful, shining gem, and we really love you and appreciate you so much. So thank you for being on the show and sharing all of this, like just incredibleness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys having me. We love you guys and appreciate everything you're doing. My friends are really excited to, um, I've actually have, I listened to your yelling and your ranting and I have told people about your show. I have three people that are newcomers. And now that I've shouted some names out, I'm going to be like, listen, you're going to have to watch it because yeah, I don't you're in it. Yeah. See what I did? Exactly. Yes. That's a salesperson helping you out. Just have any new guests you have on there, say a couple names and their friend has to watch it and then they'll get sucked in because you guys are so wonderful. So 
Thank so you I'm going to say I'm going to say Beyonce right now. <laughs> Oh. I just said Beyonce's name, so she has to start listening, and then she has to tell all the Bayhive to start watching. Yes, yeah. perfect. Um, That's all we need. Well, this was awesome, Jamie. You're the best. We love you. Yes. Love you. Okay. Night. Um, thanks, you guys, for tuning in. Um, we, this is episode 34. Yeah. Join us next week. Um, we're gonna be. It'll just be the two of us yammering at each other. That's right. And um, I don't know what we're gonna talk about. Something fun. Always fun. Always fun. Yeah. Boning. Um, <laughs> Have a good night, you guys. I'm Mikey. I'm Rin. And tonight, we're uh, I'm gonna, gonna stay. Uh, we're gonna, gonna stay. We're gonna stay. We're gonna stay. Cha cha cha. Oh my, <laughs> my favorite <laughs> end. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>